So we did a recent episode on Tron for Visual Effects Artists React. Now, the original Tron from 1982 is one of the first movies to have heavy CG in it. Other movies have had CG in them, like for example, in the original Star Wars, A New Hope, there's the blueprint of the Death Star that they show in a little tiny corner of a screen. <laughs> Whereas Tron took it to a whole nother level. This light cycle scene, it's super, super basic. It's super approachable now with the tools we have. We were watching this and reveling at all the immense work they had to do back then. They didn't have you know, ways to model. They didn't have ways to animate. Get this, they didn't have a way to get the rendering from the computer to the film. I mean, they had to film off the of screen for some of this stuff. It's pretty crazy. You think like they didn't have GIFs? <laughs> so we thought it would be cool to go back and recreate a scene from a major motion picture in 1982, and we will do it in one day. And we will make it exactly the same. Now we're not gonna go to the point where it's like, we have to somehow print each frame to film and then like do a 65 millimeter showing in an IMAX theater two days from now to see if it turned out. We're not gonna do that part. What we are gonna do is we're gonna try to recreate this scene using some of the same techniques, but using modern tools to do so. To learn how they did it, to respect how they did it, and also to like totally dunk on them with how good technology is these days. <laughs> Take that 40 year old movie. <laughs> Swoosh. What is this, caveman times? <laughs> you know what? The stakes aren't even high enough yet. Let's do this. I don't know how to use Blender yet. Let's crank it up even further. I'm gonna go from not having used this 3D program, Blender, to rendering a scene in one afternoon. I have faith in Nico. If you know any 3D software, it's pretty easy to switch between them, so. I'd like to think so. So when the light cycles appear here, they appear to have wireframes, but I gotta assume, and that this is something they said, that this is hand painted. And a lot of the 3D stuff, 3D stuff in this movie, was just people using airbrushing to make it look like a 3D model. Yeah, it totally is. You can see on the wheel, on the rim of the wheel right there, the lines aren't completely straight. So that grid appears, and then we finally see the light cycle. Now, I think we should start from this frame where the light cycles take off as our first shot. We'll skip the stuff with the actors, things like that. We're just focused on the CG. So the first thing that stands out to me, all the motorcycles are exactly the same model with just a color shift. Also, supposedly all of this is modeled with primitives. A primitive is just a basic shape, like a sphere or a cube or a torus. I mean, at least I can see some pretty clear primitives here. We have a sphere and we have like a, a cutout, which is probably just another sphere cutting that out. Mm -hmm. We have another tinier sphere on the inside. There's a monkey primitive in Blender. Well, there's a T-Bop primitive in 3DS Max. What's up, oh. What the hell is that T-Bop? <laughs> the T-Bop was one of the first real world objects to have all of its coordinates written out by hand and then input into a computer. But the very first object to be brought into a computer it was a hand. They took an, a model of a hand and then plotted out where all the points were and they made a rendering of it. Here it's it is. Weird. The first ever wow. 3D model. That looks pretty good. It looks really good. I can model that in an hour. Anyways. Oh, they took off. Okay. Now we have to think about these trails. So there's a gradient here mm -hmm. and the trail kind of curves. And you know what's weird? So I look at it right here when it starts. You can see the trail kind of appearing. I'm led to believe that the trail is already there and it's just being revealed from like a buoy. It's two objects, right? You can see the little gradient in where it cuts off and that is just attached to the bike itself. And then the trail yeah. seems like a separate object. Look closely at this frame. Sorry. Now I just had a revelation. If those trails were attached to the motorcycle, if the motorcycle was tilted when they turned, the trail would tilt too. And that's probably why the motorcycles don't tilt, because later on, when the motorcycles escape, they do in fact tilt. So they clearly knew to animate them like that, but the trails probably prevented them from doing so. So so far I haven't seen any shots that are particularly hard. Yeah. It's it's quite a few shots. So this is all standard animation, camera angles, there's no motion blur, there's no camera shake really. It looks like you could literally keyframe it by hand or use a spline follow for the animation, which is not how they did it. If we want to do it like they did it, we'd make we'd save a file for each frame. Oh my god, that sounds awful. <laughs> go up to where... What is that? We're working on unit three, so that way we can actually have a studio floor for filming and another space for computers, where it can be quiet and we can focus on our work. Like this all day yesterday. And I'll probably like that all day tomorrow too. All right, so here's the, the last thing that's unique about this scene that we're gonna do. I think we're gonna end it is when the guy crashes into the wall and puts a hole in the wall. Boom. So looking at this frame by frame, it looks pretty straightforward. We have a spiky 3D model that just scales up and then disappears. We have rings that just scale up and then disappear. 
The motorcycle is literally split into all of its primitive shapes, <laughs> and they don't even rotate, they just fly out. And so how do you think they did that? Do you think it's just a bunch of primitives? Or? It's definitely just stacked primitives. So here's what we have to do to make this shot. We have to make the objects. So we have to make the light cycles, we have to make the trails, we have to make the environment. So that's basically the grid ground and the background wall. We'll deal with the little extra special bits when we get there. Then we have to animate it. And then we have to render it, we have to make it we have to make it look like this. So it's a very simple rendering. It should be straightforward to do, but at this point, it's almost hard to go back and like find the old style rendering systems. Honestly, that might be the most challenging part of this is making it look like it did in this because now we have all these fancy renderers that simulate light and reflections and everything and we gotta dumb it down to have it be just shapes and colors and gradients and that's it. And then don't forget, Peter's gonna teach me how to do all this in Blender at the same time that we're doing this. Corridor is officially switching to Blender. No, we love Cinema 4D. <laughs> we love Cinema I mean, 4D. Yes! What, we? And Octane yes! Render. Yes! Yeah. Sam and and Ren and Nico told me in private. Uh, that's not true. Straight <laughs> up, that's a lie. No, you that's said a bold face lie. Google, Google it. I will give you a concession a little bit. I did say in private, off camera, that I should probably learn Blender and that it has a lot of great features. Did I say it was better? I never said that. So I guess we'll fire up Blender and watch you just show me how to do it. <laughs> All right, Peter. All right, Peter, we want to make a light cycle. We're going to make it with primitives. I have no idea how to use Blender. All right, let's do it. All right. So the first thing you want to do to bring any objects into Blender, any primitive or basically any element you want to bring into Blender, you do Shift A. That brings up a little menu for you. Go through here, got cameras, got curves, you got force fields. Go up to mesh. And what kind of primitive would you like to add? Well, it's the, the front tire on the bicycle looks like it was a sphere without a sphere cut out of it. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is looking just like 3ds Max or Cinema 4D. It's just the way you create an object is different. Now, every time you create primitive, you also create a soul. So you have to have a container where all the souls go and you don't have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. Do you have that container all set in this computer? Yeah, um, I installed the plugin, so we should be good to go. Okay, great. Well, what would you like to do next? Well, so, you know, the way they operated is they had the primitives and they would mm -hmm. boolean them with other primitives. So let's okay. create a, a second sphere and show me how you'd boolean one from the other. All right, let's do it. You keep saying this boolean, boolean. and I assume you're not making a soup broth. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm, so booleaning is, it's a, it's a mathematical term. But in this case, we're using it for addition or subtraction uh, with objects. We want to have a sphere and we want to cut a hole out of that sphere using another sphere as the object that makes the cutting. Wait, what are those numbers that were changing? I saw a bunch of numbers changing while you moved it around. <laughs> These numbers up here, I'm guessing, are the numbers they had to punch in <laughs> every single frame for the old Tron. Your three rotation numbers and your three axes in terms of your position, you had to write those down frame by frame for every object if they want to animate something. Totally, and you can actually bring those values up here. You can see this is they are. like exactly what they would be looking at. So you got two objects intersecting with each other. Yeah, two balls. We add modifier, they line object eyedropper and I drop this little sphere right here. You can see nothing happened. Nothing happened. But actually something did happen below the surface. If we go to wireframe view and uh, toggle this on and off, so then we can delete that sphere and boom, we got a little hole cut out of this sphere. Yeah, so it's just a regular sphere. Oh, you're right. With a sphere bullied out of it. It looks like just another Boolean sphere inside of there to give you the black shape. So Peter's not trying to teach me how to use Blender, he's trying to teach me how to do 80s VFX inside Blender. So knowing primitives and knowing Booleans, that's technically all we should need to make this motorcycle. Would you like me to... You know what, Peter, I feel like... <laughs> I think you're ready. You Would you like me to... You're ready. <laughs> you want me to take over? All right, time to add a middle sphere. I hit... Shift A to go back to the 80s, and then I create a sphere in the 80s. He's learning so good! He's doing so good! And I want to be <laughs> scooted outwards just a little bit. Hey, is this a light cycle? Dang! Or uh, Nico, is that Tron? Not only is this Tron, this is also a new industrial design for a speaker. Uh, so all speaker companies can now pay me f for the rights to use the shape. Dang, and Nico's getting the hang of this real quick. But I'm impressed. Real. So, these guys have finished recreating Tron, and it wasn't as easy as they thought it was gonna be. What was the biggest challenge? 
<laughs> Trying okay. to concentrate in this loud work environment. Peter and I started working on the shots yesterday. Like got the motorcycles built and kind of built the world. The looks kind of falling into place. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, it's time to start animating. This will be easy. This will be easy. This will take no time at all. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So today we're gonna present to you the light cycle sequence, remastered and reapproached in modern times. Took many people, many, many days of time. Peter and I went out and just did it in one day. Okay, but it should be stated that Nico learned Blender for this video, like start to finish, which is really impressive. The shots you're gonna see here, the three shots I did are my first three renders I've ever done in Blender. I saw two shots and I didn't realize that they were not the original Tron shots. Oh, thank you. Those 90 degree turns. Dude. So I think you're trying to bamboozle me right now. What? <laughs> what? Dumb. This is the original Tron. <laughs> We're watching the original Tron first. So everybody has a point of reference before yeah. we show them our version. You're not being gaslit. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. I saw some Wait a second. Anything. You didn't see anything. I just saw a little glitch. What did you see? I know what I saw. I just saw one of the background shapes bleed through into the foreground. I did too. Wait, but this is the original because there's the insert of the Tron Man in there. <laughs> <laughs> Tron Man! The Tron Man's in there! Alright, you guys got us. We tricked you. That was that was our version that we watched first. Brandon and Nick figured it out like three <laughs> shots in. <laughs> but honestly, it was not very obvious. Like, So now I don't really have context for what you have recreated. Now I actually legitimately do need to see the original versions. This is Blue Leader to Blue Bikes. Run these guys into your jet walls. Copy Blue Leader. Copy Blue Leader. This is Gold 1 to Gold 2 and 3. Split up. Take them one to one. The explosion looks really solid, dude. Like, Hell yeah. you match the aesthetic Damn. spot on. <laughs> so this is where it's most obvious by like a huge margin that they're not the same shots because they don't line up at all. And yet, if you were just to look at them one after another, you wouldn't be able to tell. It's one thing to just animate some stuff, driving it around in a grid. It's another thing to try to make it look like somebody's work from 40 years ago. Yeah, I mean, those turns were just ridiculous. The turns. Like, we could have just had it animated along the path, but that, they didn't have that technology back in the day. But yeah, we were guessing that for the corners, they just had two separate bike models and two separate trail models. They were just booing out of existence one motorcycle and leaning into existence another one. At least it makes me really appreciate just the amount of like foresight and planning and like knowing that you sit down and you do this math and it's like it should work out. It's kind of like the same thing as shooting a rocket into space <laughs> or like hitting the moon. It's like I did the math it should work. If any of the original Tron artists are watching this video, we'd love to have you break down how you actually approach this. That'd be super cool. Mm -hmm. Hit us up, please. <laughs> yeah. What if you went through and just updated all the textures and threw in a modern rendering engine? So it's the exact same shot as the original Tron, but looks more modern. Yeah, I mean, we could totally do that. We would literally just be like pressing buttons and changing sliders and stuff like that to yeah. just up it to the next level.
let us know what you think of our Tron sequence. Did it match the original? Was it a complete disrespect to <laughs> the artist? Did we just spit on their work and just <laughs> grind our heel into it? This ended up being really fun. I think it'd be really cool to do this again with other famous VFX shots. They have to be achievable. It's not like we just go and redo the Avengers one take. I kind of feel like we could do the Matrix bullet mm, dodge. That would be a fun one. It's one thing to react to it. It's another thing to live it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hope you learned something today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, that's it. Consider going to our website, CorridorDigital.com. If you enjoyed watching us retrace the footsteps of early CGI pioneers, and you might enjoy the upcoming functional filmmaking series, we've taken all the crazy knowledge we've gained from the 10 years of making videos on YouTube, and we packed them into this series exclusive for CorridorDigital.com subscribers. Head on over if you want to take part in that and see the other crazy shows that have been greenlit as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.